Good morning. Good morning, Hearts International Church. Oh, come on. Are you guys awake there today? Come on, I want to see you stand to your feet. And good morning to all of you watching at home or via social media or television, however you may be tuning in this morning. I just wanna let you in on a little something you may not have realised. We got so carried away on the side of the platform here praying and so stirred up in our faith that we nearly missed the opener. We got so carried away and so inspired and so caught up in what God was saying and the presence of the Lord just as we were pressing in to seek Him here that we nearly missed opening the service. And I say that just to encourage you that in that moment here before the service even began, God captivated us and and encouraged us and challenged us to believe for bigger than even what we began this morning believing for. Now I wanna tell you, when I woke up this morning, I was already believing for big things. But what God just spoke right there in that moment moment, flawed, shattered, just ripped apart every single desire that I was believing for. And so I want you this morning to know that God has big things in store for you today. Come on, say, I serve a big God. I wanna hear your faith this morning. Say, I serve a big God. I serve a big God. He can do great things. Hallelujah. I'm gonna encourage you this morning to join with us also in our mission. Our mission this morning is to see this whole nation come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour. The Bible tells us that one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that He is Lord. Come on. One day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that He is Lord. But we wanna see that happen today in our nation, that this nation would fall to its knees and that every knee would bow and confess that Jesus Christ is the only saving grace and the only hope of glory, the only one who can save this nation. Amen. Come on, HRC, I'm not gonna give up this morning till you start to get stirred up on your faith. I don't know what you guys have been through this week, but I just want you right now to start praying in tongues. Come on. Kiara sata kashende de soto koshiende. Kiara soto koshende de si andara takashanda. Kesende de to koshiende de si ata takashondo de soto koshende. Right now, Lord, we shift every atmosphere that is contrary to what you want to do this morning. Right now, Lord God, we're not going to wait even for the worship to begin. Right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we shift every atmosphere, every antichrist spirit gripping the hearts of people in this church and watching online right now, Lord God. Let faith arise in Your people this morning. Let hope arise in Your people this morning. God, we know that You say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And Lord, this morning as Your redeemed, we come together and we say it is so that this will be a house of faith, of signs, of wonders, of miracles. Lord, that this morning the prodigals are coming home. Lord, this morning the prisoners will be released. Come on, hallelujah. So now I'm gonna ask you, are you ready to worship the Lord? Hallelujah. I think you're ready for the Word now. I wanna encourage you this morning from 2 Corinthians chapter 1. This is what the Lord laid on my heart this morning. It says He has never been, this is God, He's never been both a yes and a no man. A yes and a no God, He will always and has always been a God for us with a resounding yes. For all of God's promises, find their yes of fulfilment in Him. Say with me, yes. Yes. Does God wanna heal you this morning? Does God wanna touch you this morning? Has God got a blessing stored up for you this morning? All of those yeses find fulfilment in Him. And in His yes and our amen, as they ascend to God, we bring Him glory. I love that. It's God's yes. It's your amen. How often do we forget that? It's God's yes. It's your amen. It's God that makes the promises, but it's your heart and your faith that partners with that promise of God to pull what is right now stored up in heaven into this moment to manifest in your life right now. And I just sensed this morning as God was speaking to me that there were those of you who know that there are dormant promises of the Lord for your life and you've been hanging on to God's yes and leaving out your amen. And that's what this time is of praise and worship. When we praise the Lord and we worship Him and we say, God, You, Jesus, You did it all. 
You paid the price, but my heart receives it. My faith receives it. Come on, it's God's yes, it's your, amen. As we bring Him glory, now it is God Himself who's anointed us. God Himself has anointed you this morning. Your hands are anointed this morning. When you lift your hands in worship, you're lifting holy hands this morning. When you lift your hands this morning in worship, you're lifting anointed hands today. When you dance and praise and shout this morning, those are some anointed feet. He Himself has anointed you and He's continually strengthening both you and us in His union with Christ. The Lord spoke to me this morning when He first reminded me the Scripture. Notice it says that God is continually strengthening two things, both us and our union with Him. And this I believe what has brought discouragement. Just just wave at me this morning if you felt a little bit of discouragement over the last couple of weeks. Okay, this is for you. God strengthens continually both you and your union with Him. How often is our union with Christ only strengthened in our weakness? Come on, how often is our union with Christ, our prayer life only increased in a battle? How often is our dependency on Christ only increased when we realise that we're just a group of sinners in need of a Saviour and without God stepping in, there's nothing that we can do. Come on, is it just me this morning? See the Lord, although He's strengthening both you He's strengthening your union with Him, your dependency on Him, your readiness to fall on your knees and surrender, your willing heart to praise Him through everything that you're experiencing. He knows we are His, since He has also stamped His seal of love on us. This is the last thing I wanna leave with you as you prepare your hearts to worship Him. He has stamped His seal on you this morning. I don't know if you own a piece of jewellery, but when you see a piece of jewellery, there's a hallmark stamped on that piece of jewellery. It's a hallmark stamp. That stamp is ownership. It's ownership. It's certification. It's worth. It's value. This morning you are stamped with His seal. Hallelujah. You guys ready to turn it up? Let's go.
standing here Not knowing how we'll get through this test But holding on to faith you know best Nothing can catch you by surprise You've got this figured out You're watching us now when it looks as if we can't win You wrap us in your arms and step in And everything we need you survive You've got this in control And now we know that you made us
from the inside, from the inside of me. May you delight on the inside, in the inside of me. Come feel my life on the inside, from the inside.
leak out a little there. But right now, His glory, His presence, His Shekinah is hovering over this place. Come on, just drink it in. Just drink it in this morning. Just breathe in this morning. Breathe in that breath of heaven. It is life-giving. It is saving. It is restoring. It's full of miracles and signs and wonders because you're breathing the atmosphere of the throne room this morning. Just breathe it in. Come on, begin to worship. Just begin to sing your own song, your love song. Sing with your spirit. Sing with your understanding. Come on. Jesus, be high and lifted up. Be high and lifted up. Come on. Be high and lifted up. Be high and lifted up. Be high and lifted up. Oh Jesus, it's you we glorify. It's you we lifting high. Your name be glorified. Oh, be high and lifted. Be high and lifted up. Be high. You are so worthy this morning, Lord. So worthy of our worship. So worthy of our adoration. So worthy of our praise this morning. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all.
Why do you have to be so noisy? Why do you have to be so animated? Can't we just be quiet? Can't we just be contemplating? This is no time to be quiet. The church has been silenced. The church has been shut down too long. There's a cacophony of noise and godly babble rising up from the earth. There's a cloud of wickedness and godliness, hard-heartedness in the atmosphere over nations, over the planet. This is the hour for the church to rise and release a sound. Come on, right there. A sound, a sound, a sound to shout with a voice of triumph. He says, if you are silent, the very rocks will cry out. You are releasing a sound. Every silent saint that's shut down at home, contemplating it. Every believer that for the last 18 months had a mask on and was told, you can come to church, but you cannot sing. You cannot pray. You're releasing a sound for them. That's why we're so radical. That's why we're so vocal this morning. Come on, somebody. Get up and shout of us Sunday. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus, we worship you this morning. God of gods and Lord of lords, there is none like you. God, we have been called for such a time as this, not just to be a remnant holding on by our fingernails, hands bleeding, trying to hold on until the rapture comes, but we are a people who have been redeemed by your blood and we overcome what is in the world by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. You're coming back for a triumphant church. You're coming back for a warring church. Ha! You said the gates of hell would not prevail against it. You said the kingdom will advance by force. It's no time to be wimps in the kingdom. We've got to be warriors in the kingdom. God, we're prepared to be. We understand that the church, I'm not talking about the true church, will reject us more and persecute us more for the stand than even the world will do. But we couldn't care. We are going to ring true with your sound, your message, your heartbeat for our nation. So to this end this morning, God, we pray right now, take charge. Right now, take control. We are not interested in what a man or a woman has to say. Not interested. We're only interested in what you have to say this morning. God, when I stand to bring your word in a few moments, if there is one word that comes out of my mouth that is not your word, shut it up in my mouth. Shut it up in my mouth. As Pastor Wilder understands to exhort us in a few moments, let every word be pure, pure. Let every word be true. The doctrine of the apostles, it has not changed. Mighty God, have your way, have your will in this place. We'll give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory. And all God's people said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Hallelujah. Just give the Lord one final shout of praise. Take your seats if you can. Well, it is my sweetheart's birthday. Oh, yeah, you are. Did you just sneak up on me? Are you trying to tell me something? You're not. Are you sure? 
Okay, I was just waiting for you to tap me on the shoulder. It was her birthday this past week. Wasn't that amazing? And, you know, she said, this is the best birthday you've ever had. Didn't you say that? Everybody spoiled her, loved on her. Moi. And so this morning, we just want to present you with some flowers. And we want to tell you as a family, as a household of faith, that we love you. We honor you. I couldn't do what I do without, she has a job and a half keeping me on the straight and narrow and focused. But I know that we would not be doing what we're doing as a house if it wasn't for the phenomenal anointing on her. And you know, she is one of the most self-sacrificing people I know. I start dropping hints like six months before my birthday or Christmas. I send them emails with links. But she will, excuse me, she will actually give away gifts that we give her. And so uh, this year we just said to her, not anymore. You need to receive them and be blessed. And uh, so we want you to know that you are an awesome wife, you are an awesome mother, and you're an awesome mother in the faith. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Love you guys. Thank you, everybody. Um, it truly has been a really blessed week. So thank you so much for your love and all the wishes and everything that you have extended towards me. I really feel loved this week. So thank you. Are there any newcomers in this house this morning? Anyone here for the first time? God bless you. Awesome. Great to have you with us. Great to have you join with us this morning. We know you're going to be blessed. Great, and please don't rush away afterwards. If you haven't received a gift, please see one of the lovely folk at the door and make sure you get a gift bag with some goodies from us with our love. Pastor Bianca is going to um, tell us about RBR starting up in just a couple of weeks. You don't want to miss the start of our new year and our new term. Amen. Can I just get a shout from the RBR students? They do me proud every time they're here, every time they're around, every time I see them, they do me proud. But um, I just wanted you to hear that kind of faith because there's something about that faith that's evident that you can hear. And so I wanna tell you, RBI is a place of absolute inward, outward transformation. It's a place of signs, wonders and miracles. It's a place where you are trained and equipped to see, believe, receive, to, to, to take revival, not only receive revival and refreshing, but to take that everywhere that you go. I wanna, I wanna challenge you, ask one of the RBI students about what happens inside these four walls during the week of RBI. We have videos that we haven't even released. Physical healings of people inside the building, on the streets. We encountered just a few weeks ago, a guy who had just come out of prison, who um, was an apparently significant, dangerous drug dealer, who just had his ribs broken. I think he was stabbed or something. Healed in the middle of the streets by students out. I witnessed it. In that moment, surrendered his life to the Lord. We have students here to testify that it happened. This is a place where you can be truly equipped to do what man would consider is impossible, but is possible only through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. And so if you wanna be equipped, trained, if you wanna be part of this end time revival, if you just wanna be a person of fearless faith, which is what this world needs right now, come and join RBI. If you are seeking the call of God in your life, even if you have no idea what it is, this is a place where you will discover discover things about yourself and God that you never, ever, ever realised before. And also, I mean, I wanna tell you lastly, we have people who've been in ministry for decades who come to RBI and say, I didn't even realise how much more of God there was. And so this isn't a place just for newcomers or new believers or new converts. There are people with significant ministries that come to RBI and say, this changed my life and my ministry. So this is for everybody. If you wanna be trained and equipped, we have a full-time and evening part-time school starting again in September. September. And um, it's the, the second week of September. We're following the straight curriculum with our county. Our day school is Tuesday to Friday. 
and that is 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And our evening school, our part-time school, which is exactly half the rate, is um, Tuesday evening from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. We have full bursaries and full scholarships available. Our desire is to see this nation and the nations of the world transformed. And so we're not in this business for money. We're not in this to gain anything. We're looking to sow and impart the authentic anointing of the Lord and His Holy Spirit in you to see you take that to the world. And so if you are interested in signing up or even hearing more, then please, there's a desk for RBI outside the front. There'll be students there to speak to you that you can ask questions to from their own testimonies. Please come and see us today. They're um, evening school and part-time school, full-time and daytime. We just wanna offer this to everybody. If you're watching online, you can find out more about us by calling us in the office from Tuesday to Friday. Um, the details in the bottom of the screen or email us or visit the website. It's www.riverbibleinstitute.co.uk. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you are glad to be part of the church that Jesus is building in this hour, in this day, in this nation? And whatever nation you're watching from this morning, that's a great thing about our evening part-time Bible college. You can join in from wherever you are in the world. That's how incredible it is. But we are committed to seeing, raising up an end time remnant, a fearless generation who are gonna be equipped and ready to take an end time harvest. Amen. So I wanna to read to you from Judges chapter six. Remember, I've been sharing with you a series over the past couple of weeks. And I said to you that when you read certain passages now, they have a whole different meaning because of the time and the season that we're in. And so what happened was because God's people came to a place where they were lukewarm, where they were compromising their faith, compromising the way of life, compromising anything and not seeing the fulfillment, not seeing the fruition of what God had purposed and promised for them. The Word of God says that God raised up judges or champions. And I want to read to you this morning from Judges chapter 6 about, and I remember I said to you, champions that God calls champions, we may not call champions. But this is because God sees what we don't see this morning. And I want you to turn to the person next to you right now in this moment because faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word. Today there is going to come an impartation. Your faith is going to be stirred. And this morning I believe you're going to see a capacity as you hear this Word, as you receive it, that you have not considered before, that you have not seen on the inside of you. So turn to the person next to you and say, you look like a champion this morning. If they didn't seem too convinced, turn to the person the other say, you definitely look like a champion this morning. Hallelujah. So Judges chapter 6, verse 6 says, Israel was greatly impoverished. How many of you know that word impoverished is a word straight from hell? It is never ever God's purpose or will for any of His people to be impoverished in any way, not just financially, but in your marriage it is never His will for your marriage to be lacking in any way. It's never His will for your home to be impoverished. It's never His purpose for your business, your job, your place of work to be impoverished. It's never His purpose for that God-given dream or vision to be in a place of impoverished. That is of the devil. So because of the Midianites, the enemies and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. How many of you have been part of the church, have been crying out over these past 18 months? Hallelujah. Come on, you don't have to be embarrassed. How many of you have been crying out on behalf of our nation, on behalf of our government on behalf of our business, on behalf of kingdom business, on behalf of marriages, our children over these past 18 months. Well, hallelujah, because we serve the same God yesterday, today and forever. He is the Lord, He does not change. So what He did here for His people, how many of you believe that He is able to do for you this morning and for your circumstance? It says, and it came to pass. Say with me this morning, it came to pass. What have you been praying for? Lift your hands and say this, speak it over. It. it came to pass. It came to pass. What God deposited in seed form, it's only a matter of time. 
when your chronos, the natural time becomes kairos. That's God's time, supernatural time. When it becomes kairos time, you can say, and it came to pass. Come on, say with me this morning. How many of you believing before the end of this year, even as you hear this word, there's a quickening of your faith. You sense you're about to step into that kairos moment where you're about to give a testimony and say it came to pass. What I've been believing for, what I've been praying for, trusting God for, standing on His Word for, it came to pass just as He said it would. Said when it came to pass, when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord because of their enemies. So here they were at harvest time, they had sowed, they had ploughed at harvest time, rather than being in the place where they could see the harvest, they hiding away in caves, in the background, full of fear. There's Gideon threshing wheat in a place he should never be, locked up, shut down, shivering away, full of fear in the cave with everybody else. I want you to see prophetically this morning where our nation is and where it has been over these past 18 months. <laughs> There's such an anointing this morning. I want you to see, because this morning I'm about to shame the devil and I'm about to give glory to the Lord. Because when you see what He's been trying to hide from you, you're not gonna be able to stay in your seat for one second. You see, the enemy is not omniscient. So he doesn't know anything, but he kind of sensed that we're in the last hours of the last days. But the problem is that he went ahead of time. It wasn't yet his time to do what he's done. Shut down economy, shut down businesses, shut, try to shut down the church. He couldn't shut us down, but shut down many other churches. Try to take people's health, their lives, their well-being at a time when they're most fruitful, when the harvest should be coming through. But I want to tell you this morning, church, it's time for us. It's not the time to be locked up and shut down in the camp. It's harvest time this morning. It's time to begin to reap. It's time to begin to see a supernatural harvest. And this morning, I want you to hear the word of faith because God heard their cries and God raised up a champion. There are many right now all around you. I heard just on the news this week, all the debates, they can't get people back into their places of work because of a spirit of fear. No one wants to, everyone has now become lukewarm. They become comfortable. They've settled down in their caves, but it's harvest time. It's not time to be shut down and locked down. It's time to come out. It's time to see the harvest. It's time to take the territory that God has given to us. Now I want you to recognise, because while many are sleeping now, there is a remnant that God is raising up. There is a generation that God is raising up. While many will believe the lies of the devil, there are those who recognise we're stepping into a season because the greatest harvest, the greatest wine, the greatest glory is always reserved for the last time, for the end times. This is the time and this is the season where we're about to take the greatest harvest we ever have. And you know what happens when God speaks to Gideon, this unlikely champion, and He calls him what He doesn't see in Himself. He says, you're a mighty man of valour. Lift your hands this morning. If you know that you've been anointed for breakthrough, you've been anointed this morning as a champion 
where God has placed you in whatever mountain of influence He has. You've been anointed this morning to bring through a harvest. You've been anointed to establish the Kingdom of God in the darkest places, in the driest places. You've been anointed this morning to bring in, not just bring in an end time harvest, but to fund an end time harvest. You've been anointed this morning to become a solution in the marketplace. You've been anointed this morning in the medical field. You've been anointed this morning in the educational field. You've been anointed this morning in terms of government. Those that God is raising up right now, you mighty men and women of valour, it's time to take your place. This is the time. This is the season. And God says to Gideon, gives him an incredible revelation of himself. He says, I am Jehovah Shalom. I am the Lord, your peace. The moment he said that, there was a supernatural peace that came over Gideon from his mind right down through his whole body. I want you to know that when the Lord gave us a word in March of last year, told us exactly what to do. There was a supernatural peace that came over us. It didn't matter what happened. It didn't matter what we heard, what we saw, what people said, even what, what they were broadcasting on the news. There was a supernatural peace. We're still living in that supernatural feast, peace. There is nothing that can faze us. And I'm not saying that this morning, you know my heart. I'll only tell you what is the truth. Nothing, absolutely nothing has had the ability to disturb this peace that we're walking in right now. That peace can be yours this morning. That peace can be yours this morning. Peace to know that God's got your tomorrow. Peace to know that the harvest that God's prepared for you, nobody, no, but, no devil, no force, no influence, no institution, no organisation, no ruling can, has the right or the power to rob what God has said is yours in Jesus' Name. But I love this. In chapter 7, verse 7, it says, Then the Lord said to Gideon, By the 300 men, who lapped, I will save you. What are the 300, the remnant? And deliver the Midianites into your hand. Let all the other people go. Let every man to his place. 32,000 to begin with. And 300. And God says, that's all that I need. I want you to lift your hands this morning. I want you to see beyond those who you thought you could count on 18 months, two years ago. I want you to see with the eyes of your spirit, those who you perceived to have been those ones who you could trust, those that you could follow. I really sense this morning the Holy Spirit ministering to your hearts. Some of you, your faith has been shaken. Some of you this morning, you put your hope and your confidence in people who've let you down. You've put your hope and your confidence in systems and organisations that haven't panned out for you. I want to keep your hands lifted this morning because there is an anointing right now to break that stronghold off your life. I want you to know this morning that when we looked two years ago. There were many, many churches, I don't need to tell you, in this nation. Blazing bright, doing a great work. Many have fallen by the wayside. But praise God this morning, I want you to see, there are many places right now in our capital, many buildings standing empty that once were filled. Many places right now, many restaurants that once were active, town centres that once were buzzing, that are now empty. But God is raising up a remnant. He said, buy the 300, not the 32,000. Why? God cannot use a people whose hearts are full of fear. And this morning, as you hear this Word, 
Faith will not reside in the place where fear is known. Right now, supernatural faith is rising up on the inside of you. Right now, faith is stirring in your heart. Not just faith for today, faith to take the harvest, faith to see the return, faith to see what God has promised come to pass in your life. In this moment, disappointment has been broken off your life. Supernatural peace has been released on the inside of you. Peace to believe and stand on God's Word. Peace to worship in the midst of maybe your greatest trial. Peace this morning to believe that God is able to preserve you, that no disease has the right to take your life. If God says, I'm not done with you, I'm not finished with you. Peace that fills you from the inside out. And this morning that peace is gonna guard your heart and your mind. I don't want you this morning, we're gonna sow a seed. And I felt in my heart as I was waiting on the Lord, that this morning as we honour the Lord with our gifts, with those sacrifices, with the seed that we sow, it will be, and I saw the picture of my spirit, like those 10,000 who went down, God says, this is a test. Go and drink. This morning we're drinking in His presence. This morning we're drinking of the new wine of heaven. And God says, watch how they drink. You don't know. But right now heaven is watching how we drink. Heaven is watching the Lord has been watching how you worship this morning. The Lord has been watching how we come into His presence. The Lord has been watching whether, they're dis- whether we've allowed distractions to come in the way of our focus of Him this morning. You don't know it, but the Lord has been watching to see those who may be going through tough times, but no one would know because you've lifted your hands and you've worshipped with everything you have because your confidence is not in anybody but in the Lord God Almighty. And you know He is able to deliver you. You know He's gonna come through for you. You know He is your provider. You know He's your sustainer. You know that He's your miracle worker. You know this morning that He's gonna make a way where there seems to be no way. You know this morning He is the Lord of the harvest and He is going to enable you to see the harvest that is rightfully yours in the most unexpected time by the most unexpected means because it seems ridiculous when God released a strategy I mean who would have thought that just going and then breaking a clay pot, a clay jar, would be the means by which God would enable the enemies to turn on themselves. And I want you to see this morning, woo, there's such an anointing right now being released in this place. Some of you are getting it right now. God is going to release to you supernatural strategies for breakthrough and for the harvest, for you to see victory where you've not known victory. And it's not gonna be what you've known before. God's gonna give you a strategy, a deposit a strategy in your spirit. It may not make sense in the natural, but if you step on the Word, you step Step out in faith, see what God will do. He said, by the 300, I am gonna gonna conquer this enemy. God's looking, they're more than 300. I don't know if the 300 made their way here this morning, but if you know you're part of the 300, that God brought about a mighty victory that affected an entire nation, I want you to stand right now, lift your hands. If you know that God has selected you to be part of this 300, this remnant, this end time army, the harvesters that God is equipping, that God is raising up, that God is releasing, that God is training right now into every area so that we're not just, listen, we're not just about seeing a bank balance change for a month. We're about seeing a nation 
turn around right now. I want you to stretch your eyes, stretch your faith, see beyond your present need. See God using you, raising you up in this nation to become an end time solution, an end time harvester, an end time well, an end time source, an end time solution that will see the Kingdom of God right now move supernaturally in our nation once again. Then I want you right now to respond to this Word. When you hear a Word from the Lord, there is always a need to respond. How you respond, God holds you accountable. I know how I need to respond. I want you, if you know you're part of the 300, to come this morning as you sow. I want you to see it, whether you're giving electronically or if you're gonna give in the envelopes here. I want you to see it prophetically this morning, like those 300 who went down to drink. Say this morning, Lord, I'm drinking in your presence. I'm drinking from that well that never runs dry. I'm drinking from a heavenly source this morning. I thank You, Lord, that as I sow, my seed this morning surpasses every natural boundary and limit because it becomes supernatural in Your hand. It reaches heaven. Many things in my life never make it to heaven, but my seed this morning, according to Your Word, makes it to heaven this morning. And I am believing today there is a turnaround in my life, a turnaround in my finances, a turnaround in my business, a turnaround in my marriage, a turnaround this morning in my bed, in whatever God's called you to do. Today is a turnaround day. Hallelujah. Are you ready? No, 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 no. Are you ready for harvest? Are you ready for harvest? Hallelujah. So by looking at your harvest this morning in obedience, in the Name of Jesus, as we have a look at church news, if you're watching from another nation, you can give via PayPal or any of the means that are displayed on the screen. If you're here this morning, there are means, there are sources, there are facilities in the foyer, or you can give via the envelopes or any other means. God bless you this morning. I want you to give with great faith. I want you to give with the God that Shalom, Jehovah Shalom, that peace that surpasses all understanding as you give this morning. The same peace we are still walking in is your portion this morning as you act on the Word in Jesus' Name. Amen. We are in need of more HIC minibus drivers. We are offering a transport service every Sunday morning to students living in the Hatfield area to join us in church. If you think you can help us with this vital service before and after church, please see Ben Dugdale after the service. This is an urgent call for everyone to join us to worship and pray together on Thursday evenings, 7.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. We, the body of Christ, are the only restraining force on the earth today. So please don't miss this opportunity to come together and pray in unity for the salvation of our families, our communities, and another great spiritual awakening across the nations. So see you this Thursday in the Sycamore Room. Zone has had such an incredible impact on my daughter Tiani. She only started to go to Kids Zone in January and by June she said yes to Jesus and got baptised. Hallelujah. Therefore it's my privilege to share some exciting news with you guys. From September Kids Zone plans to grow from 
two groups to four groups. And to top that, we are adding two new groups for our young people. We are so excited to introduce Dynamite for all our year six to year nines and Ignite for our year 10 and 11s. If this is for you or your young person, please come and sign up later in the foyer. To kickstart this, we'll start a powerful new teaching, hearing God's voice, helping our children and young people to recognize when and how God speaks to them. You know, there's no time limit on what God can do through our children. We have an opportunity to equip the next generation to walk in their identity in Christ and to help them fulfill the call of God on their lives. But in order to accomplish this, we need you. So to become part of this dynamic ministry, sign up your young person, or to find out more about our new age groups, please visit our information desk at the foyer, or you can contact Leandi at leandi at sftn.org. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise up a standard against him. You are that standard. You are chosen, called. You are needed. And together, we are a fearless generation, a new breed of believer and honor. This is the time. This is the hour for the church to arise and take her place, for her to make a stand, and the gates of hell will not prevail against her. Come and discover and develop the call of God on your life. Get ready to be set ablaze and sent out to take that fire to every part of this nation and the nations of the world. September intake is now open. Full and part-time courses are available. We offer full bursaries and scholarships. Contact us today at admin at riverbibleinstitute.co.uk or apply today online at www.riverbibleinstitute.co.uk. I heard a word in my spirit emerge. And that word, as I heard it over and over, began to quake on the inside of me like a rumble in my spirit, like the rattling sound of the dry bones, of the dry bones about to emerge from their grave, to breathe again, to come back to life, to take their place, and to see an army emerge from the abyss of the old and the new to come. Forget about the news of another wave. I'm here to break the news of another wind. A fresh wind is blowing. Army, emerge. Take your place. Rise up out of the ashes. Can't you hear the call to attention? Hear the word of the Lord. It's time to forget the former things. It's time to come together and emerge. Join us every evening at 7 p.m. from Sunday the 10th of October. Please visit emergeconference2021.eventbrite.co.uk to book now. Well, hallelujah. Have we been having church this morning or what? Hey, I had a colleague of mine in the U.S. call me the other day. He said, how do you preach after your wife has taken up the offering like that? I said, pray for me, brother. I need prayer. You know, when we, we share these words with you, it's not about just taking up the offering. It's about equipping you and activating you for the time that we're living in. One of the distinctives about this house and why we say to you should not miss a week is that there are three levels, and I'm going to deal with that in the next few moments. There's information, then there's revelation, and then there's activation. And everything about this house, because we're a fivefold ministry house, is about activating the saints for the work of the ministry and the times and the seasons that we're in. So there is a supernatural activation happening every time that we come together. How many of you know that we bless because of that anointing on the house? Can I see your hand? Well, thank you for, we've got about 25% of you. I appreciate your enthusiasm this morning. I want to tell you, if I wasn't the pastor of this church, I wouldn't be anywhere else on a Sunday morning. I'm tired of doing the church thing. We've got to get real and we've got to get relevant for the days that we're living in. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I thought you were going to preach part four of the sermon this morning. 
So I'll just kind of pick up where you left off if that's okay. I want to talk to you following on from that incredible word that Pastor Owen has just shared on the keys to activating, say activating, God's supernatural increase in your life. The keys to activating God's supernatural increase in your life. And you know, we've talked about these principles in the past, but you are going to see in this day and in this hour more than ever before why that word that you have been hearing is going to set you on course and separate you from everyone else in this day and in this hour, even in the time of shaking and famine, to walk in the supernatural favour and provision of God. Now come on, somebody shout amen if you believe that to be so. What I want you to get a revelation of today is this, that it is not just a key or a principle of supernatural acceleration, but it is an actual covenant of increase that God has entered into with you. Hallelujah. Say it's a covenant. It's a covenant of increase. And I believe that for many of you this morning, as I just laid this foundation, I was preparing this word earlier on in the week and this morning when I woke up and I was just listening to the Holy Ghost at about five o'clock. I couldn't move off from the first page. God was just giving me so much insight into this principle of supernatural multiplication and entry. So I I wanna release as much of this word as I can this morning. I believe there are many of you here and you've seen the provision of God, you've seen the goodness of God in the past, but I wanna tell you, get ready, even as you heard just a few moments ago, because when you receive the revelation of this word that I'm gonna bring this morning and you begin to be activated in it as God watches over this word to perform it, there is another whole realm and dimension that you are about to enter into. Some of you are not convinced yet. Help me, Holy Spirit. And I'll tell you why. It's because in this global pandemic and the shaking that it brought, it's all about God resetting the world. He didn't send the pandemic This is not part of his purpose and plan, but he is using it for good as he said he would do in his word. Right now, God is resetting the world. Right now, God is resetting global economies. Right now, God is resetting the church. That's why there's some places that will not reopen their doors even now while churches are opening up. Some will open their doors for a brief while and then shut because God is resetting the church. God is raising up the true church with a true message and a true word for this time and where the Spirit of the Lord has strived with some of those places before, the Bible says He will not always strive with man. God is raising up a new breed of believers and God is raising up a new breed of churches today. That's why we're so committed to raise up men and women of God. We believe that hundreds of churches will be birthed up out of this place and that even more, many more will come and say, can we come into a life? We have churches every week who are making contact with us. Can we align with you? So pray for us as we seek the mind and the purpose of God because we don't want to establish another denominational structure. We believe local churches should be autonomous under their own fivefold ministry. But God is shifting, God is shaking, and God is realigning. And we are about to see, hear me this morning, the greatest wealth transfer out of the world and into the kingdom of God. We're about to see the greatest transfer of resources out of the hands of the world and into the hands of the, please sit down, into the hands of the people of God, such as we've never ever seen before. And I'll tell you why, it is linked to an end time, last day's harvest. The church of Jesus, the remnant church in this day will lack nothing. The people of God in this day will lack nothing. And I prophesy that it's imminent. We need to get ready. We need to get prepared and we need to begin to make room for it. Can somebody shout hallelujah? I'll tell you why. Go and study Scripture. You will discover God is a God of multiplication and increase. 
He's the God of multiplication and increase. Look in your Bible at Genesis chapter 1. For the sake of time, I'm just going to highlight three verses. Look at verse 11, Genesis chapter 1. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth and it was so. Verse 20, then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance, abound with an abundance of living creatures. Let the birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. And then verse 22, and God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply. Say multiply. Fill the waters of the earth. Let the birds multiply on the earth. So this principle of supernatural increase and of multiplication, God did not just install in His nature in creation, but the Bible says even in verse 28 of the same chapter, that when God created man in His image and likeness, God put the same principle of multiplication in Him. He said, be fruitful and what? Multiply. He said, subdue the earth, have dominion over it. I want you to put your hand on your heart this morning and I want you to prophesy over yourself. Say, I am blessed. I am anointed for supernatural multiplication and increase. Now, multiplication by its simple definition is the adding and the increasing of measures. We live our lives in measures and in levels and in seasons. That means I'm not going to experience everything in my life all at one time. People who go through a crisis, people who go through trying or difficult times and challenges find out in those moments that part of the grace of God is that He doesn't let you feel the full weight of everything all at one time. That's why the Bible says He will never allow you to go through to endure more than what you are able to, but that He will always provide a way of escape. Those who lose somebody, the Bible says, and life teaches, they go through a process of grieving. That means that everything I have, I experience in my life, I'm not just going to experience in one single time frame. So I move from one place to another place. I move from one dimension into another dimension. And then we live our life in seasons. Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 1 says that for everything there is what? There is a time and there is a season. Now let me share with you some very, very simple but practical, prophetic and powerful keys to your supernatural increase and enlargement this morning, and I want you to write them down. Here is the first one. What you do with the measure that you have right now, with what God has put in your hand right now, you can pray, you can prophesy, you can quote the Word of God, but what you do with what you have right now is going to determine the next level of increase in your life. In other words, if you mismanage this level, if you mismanage this season, you will not be able to move to another level. You'll have to go through that level, go through that season again. Come on, somebody say ouch or amen. You know people who seem to go through the same cycle of things over and over again. That's not the plan. That's not the purpose of God. You cannot mismanage what you have. Jesus said in Luke chapter 19, unless you are faithful in the little that God has entrusted to you right now, He will not entrust the greater to you. Now, one of the things that I find as a pastor, particularly in a faith church like this, is that people just wanna jump from mountaintop to mountaintop. But how many of you know that sometimes you've gotta go through those valleys of preparation. Sometimes you've got to go through those times in your life where it feels like you are on the backside of the desert. Why? Because God's got to keep you hidden while He works with you. 
Why? Because it ain't a pretty sight. Anybody, have we got some real people in the house this morning? So God has got to keep you hidden while He works with you. But I want to tell you this morning that when you go through those valleys, it is a season that God is taking you through where He is preparing you, where He is positioning you, enlarging you, increasing you for another level in your life. There are those moments when you say, God, you speak about blessing. I'm wading through the greatest challenge of my life right now. You said you're going up. I feel like I'm going down. You said the latter rain is about to fall. I feel like I'm in a drought. I'm in a wilderness right now. Listen, don't you dare get discouraged. I want to tell you, God is just bringing you down that one mountain because He's getting you ready and prepared to take you up another mountain, a higher mountain. God's just getting you ready for something bigger and and for something better, can somebody say hallelujah? You'll be able to if you just keep in faith. Look back and say, you know what? It was a good thing that I got thrown out of that job, falsely accused. Why? It may have been painful at the time, but I would have been stuck in a limited environment for 20 years had God not moved me out. It was a good thing that that person, I had invested 15 years of my life, walked out on me and rejected me. It was so painful. But if it hadn't happened, I wouldn't have met the love of my life. It was a good thing that I had to go through that valley of opposition because I realized now in that valley of opposition, God was creating opportunity for me to take me to another level. Hallelujah. So you live your life on levels, in measures, and in seasons. And I want you to understand this morning, every season in your life is significant. If you look at Joseph, you understand that Joseph was doing the same thing all his life. What was he doing as a young boy in his father's house? He was a dreamer. He was dreaming dreams. That's why he got in trouble with his brothers who were jealous of him. What was Joseph doing in Potiphar's house? He was having dreams. What was he doing while he was in prison? He was having dreams, interpreting dreams. He had to learn how to do it when he was in his father's house so that by the time God brought him into Pharaoh's house, he was confident in his gifting, in his anointing and his character was developed to the place where he could sustain it. So I want you to understand key number two. In every season in your life, God is preparing you for your next assignment. Look at someone and say, every season is significant. That's why when you, when you start out on your journey with us as a ministry, and you step into a crazy church like this, and you learn how to praise, you're all self-conscious and awkward. And you're looking around you and, and you feel like you don't quite fit in. But what happens is you then move to another level of your faith where you lose all that self-centeredness and that self-awareness. And you discover a freedom on the inside of you that you never knew that you had. In other words, it starts out as an external thing. And somebody's gotta tell you, stand up. I don't feel like standing up. Somebody's got to tell you, shout unto God, I'm not going to shout. Someone's got to tell you, lift your hands. Why? Because you lift your hands in surrender to the Lord. But then it moves from just an external thing. It becomes an internal thing as you move to another level. And now somebody else doesn't have to tell you to do it, but you can tell yourself. But then it moves to another level, like I was talking about earlier on, where it's not just an external thing. It doesn't matter what's been happening around you all week. Doesn't matter if you're tired. Doesn't matter if you've got a headache. Doesn't matter if you've had a crappy week. It doesn't matter what's happening internally, how you're feeling emotionally, whether you're up or whether it down, you're down. But it moves from the outside. It moves from the inside. And then it becomes a revelational thing in your spirit. You know now that when you begin 
begin to praise God, something supernaturally turns your situation around. And now when you come into church, you don't lift your hands because I feel good, but I lift my hands because God is good. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. You know, you don't get saved and then become a prayer warrior in just two days. And it can be very awkward when you first start growing and developing in your prayer life. You know, you, you hear these saints of God in the church and they say, oh, I was praying for two hours. And you're just starting out learning how to pray. And after five minutes, you've run out of things to say. And after two and a half minutes, you just start quoting everything that you know. Oh God, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, the wisdom to, oh God, make me a channel of your peace. And for what I'm about to receive, may I be truly grateful. Come on, we've all started there. But what happens is you grow in measure. Your grace in that area of prayer, prayer begins to increase. It moves from the external, well, I have to pray because I know it's the right thing to do, to the internal, well, you know, if I don't pray, I'm failing God. Now it becomes a revelational thing where I just wanna run into that closet and spend time with Papa, spend time with Abba God. And my prayer life then moves from just me, 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 help, help. Where, where my prayers alone can begin to impact nations. Where the Holy Ghost puts the name of a person or a situation on my heart. And I know my prayers alone, just me and the Holy Ghost focused on that thing. That person can turn things around. Hallelujah. And then you hear these saints say, well, you know, I got up early in the morning. 4.30, before the sparrows were even chirping. And they spend an hour in prayer and you think, oh my God, I can't even speak to my wife for more than 20 minutes at a time. How did they do it? And so then you try it and you fall asleep on your knees. Don't look at me with those angelic expressions this morning. And if that wasn't bad enough, you actually dream that you're praying. I think that counts. If you fall asleep and you dream that you're praying, it's called sleeping in the Spirit. Just look around you. Some people are doing it right now. But you grow and you have to increase in that measure on your life. Come on, somebody say, Amen. It moves from the external it moves to the internal and then it becomes a relational thing. And here is the third key, a revelational thing rather. When something becomes revelational to you beyond just the external, beyond just the internal and it becomes revelation in your spirit, what that means is now you just have to turn the key and it's there. I don't have to be hyped up. I don't have to be stirred up to do it. I just Turn the key anywhere, any place, and it's there. Somebody say, ah, revelation. You get around somebody, listen, somebody who has a revelation of something in their life, whether it is praise, whether it is prayer, whether it is giving, and they just turn the key and it's right there. I mean, you can be standing outside in the foyer of the church, hustle and bustle, people talking around you, and you just have a quick 30 second conversation. I'm facing this need in my life. And because they have a revelation that's activated on the inside of you, they can just step into that dimension just like that. And they take you by the hand in the midst of everything that's going on around you and pow, you know you're standing at the throne of grace with somebody who knows how to touch the heart of the Father. And in about 60 seconds flat, you know something has been released and your life will never ever be the same. Somebody say, Revelation. When it's revelation, you just got to turn the key and it's there. That's why we have people who we activate in soul winning. The Bible says in the book of Acts, when you receive the power of the Holy Ghost, what is one of the first evidences? 
boldness to do what? To witness. You can know all about witnessing. You can attend the soul winning course. But when something is activated on the inside of you, that's why we have students who will win hundreds of people to the Lord in a single month. You just step into the atmosphere. You just come up close into somebody's space, personal space. And because the kingdom of God is activated on the inside of you, something touches that person. They don't even understand it because the prophet Joel said, in the last days, God will pour out His Spirit on who? All flesh. And your sons and daughters will multiply, will will prophesy, dream dreams, have visions. And he goes on to say, multitudes are in the valley of decision, harvest. That means when you've been activated and you have a revelation of soul winning when you step into that person's space they don't even know what's happening but immediately wow pow they're standing in the valley of decision and they're open to receive the gospel and you are just aghast and amazed when you say will you pray this in this prayer and there's no argument Oh, they're one or two hard nuts maybe. But 99.9 will not argue with you. Why? Because the Holy Ghost has positioned them right there waiting and ready for you because you've been activated with revelation. Hallelujah. It's the same with forgiveness. One of the most crippling things in the church that holds so many people in bondage. And as a counsellor, almost every person who was living under the control of something, the first question I ask is after, what's your vision for your life? As we talked about last time, is there anybody that you need to forgive? It can always be traced back to a hurt, to a wound, to an offence. Maybe they can't even remember the details, but the wounding is there. Now listen, when you are walking and living with a revelation of forgiveness, all you've got to do is just turn the key. So when somebody does something or says something to you, it may stun you, it may, it may even hurt you for but a moment, but it will not wound you. Why? Because you're walking in revelation of what the Word of God says. Hallelujah. And your shield of faith is up. Hallelujah. And you won't even take the scandal on. You won't even take the offence. And let me tell you, the Bible speaks about many in the great falling away of the last days. Do you know what the number one thing will be? It won't be compromise. It's going to be, the Bible says, offence. Because we're living in such a politically correct society. Everybody's getting offended over everything. People will always drop the ball. They'll always let you down. You've got to make sure you're walking in revelation of forgiveness. Listen, whatever reset the Holy Ghost needs to do, let Him do it today. I have been shocked as I've been watching the news this week. Let me just divert a little here. Do you know that the Scottish Parliament has just legislated that a child in school in Scotland of four years of age has the right to change their gender and even their name and to operate in an agenda of their own choice and dress like it without the consent of their parent? I kid you not. In the lockdown, the government brought emergency laws in place. There are so many emergency laws that have been put in place taking away your freedom during this pandemic. This pandemic is real. We know that to be a fact. But church, you better wake up and see that the pandemic is not the real issue. It's just the symptom of a wicked, ungodly agenda. Five million people. Five million people are waiting for treatment at NHS hospitals. Of all the numbers of people who die and are listed on your news broadcast, they did not die of COVID-19. They died having tested positive 
in 28 days of their death. People die every day. One in 10 people caught COVID-19 in hospital. They didn't even have it when they went in. We are living at a time right now where your GPs and your GP surgeries still won't see you face to face. Just zoom in. Tell us about your symptoms. More people will die. You watch and you wait when the statistics come out. More people will die from diseases like cancer and others that were perfectly treatable, but who fell through the system or the system wouldn't see them or look after them in the past 18 months. The agenda is massive. The LGBT agenda right now is the most wicked thing on the face of the earth. We do not condemn any person. We do not reject anybody. Regardless of your sexual persuasion or your gender or your culture or any other distinguishing factor, you are welcome in this church. And we will love you. And we will help you on your journey of faith to know Jesus and to live out the principles of the Word like everybody else in this house. But the LGBT community is about 4% of the entire population. You cannot turn on a single advert. My God, I was watching the news the other day and an advert came on for dandruff and it was two men kissing each other. Now, you know what? I'm not speaking against two men that kiss each other. That's your choice. Be it your choice. It's not what the Bible teaches, but that's a fact. But when we have that agenda forced in our faces and we have our children being taught to, and sexual, listen to me, do not let your child receive any sexual agenda education in the local school. As a parent, as a parent, do whatever you've got to do. You know, when, when the lockdown came in, the government brought an emergency law, abortion on demand, no question. Just phone the helpline, we'll send you the pill. We work with Christian Concern to have that law revoked when things opened up and the courts refused. It's in place. What you lose, what you give up, you will not regain. Do not let your children be imprinted with the LGBT agenda at school because I'll tell you the craziness of it. First of all, they told us that gender identity was not a choice. This is how I'm born. And we worked through that. Now they're telling us it is a choice. You can just choose at any time that you want to identify as male or female. There is a far greater agenda. We love everybody. We respect everybody's freedom. But listen, train up a child in the way it should go. Your child is being trained up. They are under the influence of educators who have more time with them imprinting into their lives that you as a godly parent do. That's why we want to empower you to make sure you don't lose your children to the agenda of this day and of this hour. Can I have an amen? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just had to get that out there. And, and I'm giving you full notice. We took the government to court of the, clo the closure of churches. I was not opposed to the fact of limiting numbers. I was not opposed to the fact of safe social distancing in the church. None of that. But don't you dare issue a decree from government, churches are closed. I wanna tell you something, that the church is the standard that God raises up against the destruction of the enemy. I hold governments responsible for the devastation of this pandemic because they shut down the house of God. I think I better move on. I've had my say this morning. So you've got to get activated. You've got to get activated. I'm reminded of the story that I heard of this little lady. 
She was widowed and she had two teenage boys. She was out of work and she had the responsibility of providing for their needs. And she got to a point where as was normal by the 23rd, 24th of the month, the cupboards were bare. And let me tell you this little woman, and it's a true story. When she prayed, her prayers were not short and they were not quiet. When she began to pray and petition heaven, the whole neighborhood knew. And so she got to a point, the cupboards were empty. She had just enough to give her two boys a a little bit of breakfast. She didn't tell them there was nothing else left. She gave it to them, sent them on their way to school. And she opened all the windows because she couldn't afford the air conditioning in the middle of summer. And she began to pray, Lord, I thank You. You are a faithful provider. You are Jehovah Jireh. You will meet the needs of my family. And it just so happened that her neighbor, who was an atheist, an agnostic, he thought, you know something? I can't tolerate this anymore. I'm going to teach her a lesson once and for all. I'm going to show her God doesn't hear her prayers. The whole neighborhood might, but God doesn't. And so he, he conjured up this plan that he was going to go and buy some groceries from the local grocer. Four bags of groceries. And he snuck up to her house. He could hear her praying and petitioning heaven. He rang the doorbell. He put the four bags of groceries down and he snuck off and hid behind the side of the house. I wanna tell you, when that little lady came out and she saw those four bags of groceries, she began to rejoice. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. At which point this miserable old atheist and agnostic came out and he said, I wanted to show you, I wanted to prove to you, God doesn't hear you when you pray. God didn't provide those groceries, I did. And when she heard that, I wanna tell you, it was like the top of the lid popping off the bottle. She began to shout even now. She even did a little victory dance right there in the doorway. Hallelujah. He said, woman, what's wrong with you? What are you shouting about now? She said, so you don't understand. God provided for my needs and He made the devil pay for it. (laughs) Hallelujah. I'm gonna stop there, I'm only halfway through. Would you stand with me to your feet this morning? because we wanna do some activation today. Put your hand over your heart and say, I'm blessed for increase. Blessed for increase. God said to Noah, He said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. And He built an ark for the saving of His family, the preservation of the revelation of God greater than the Titanic. Because when the blessing for increase comes, creativity comes, divine strategies come, ingenuity comes, provision comes. There are many people who won't be going back to their jobs because of fear. There are jobs opening up for you right now. There's some of you who are business people and I prophesy to you that God already has the contracts with your name written on them. They can't see it just yet, but your name is already on it. And if you will stand faithful and true and do only what He tells you, it's just a matter of time. Because Proverbs 13 says, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. Those contracts are coming into your hands because you are the righteous. One person and your career can take off. One contract and your business becomes global. Wait and see what God is about to do. Some of you right now are carrying books on the inside of you that are gonna become bestsellers. Songs of worship that will become world changers. Some of you right now are carrying ministries on the inside of you that are gonna shake nations. This is your time. You have been saved. You have been anointed for increase, hallelujah. With Esther, she was just an orphan. But when the anointing for increase came on her, she saved an entire nation. What about your home? What about your family? What about your neighbourhood? The favour of God was so heavy. The king said to her, what do you want? Even up to half of the kingdom, it will be yours. She went from being an orphan 
to being the queen of Persia and the wealthiest woman in the land. Come on, how many of you this morning, the Bible speaks about the blessing of God from generation to generation. If a curse can be passed down through the generations, how many of you this morning are gonna say, God, I wanna be an answer. I wanna be a solution. I wanna be a champion. I want every blessing that my family down the generations, a hundred years, 200 years, all the wealth, all of the good breaks, every possibility that they missed out on, I want it right now. That may sound crazy and far out, but we serve a far out God this morning. He's not a barely get by God. He's El Shaddai. There's a God of more than enough. The God of exceeding abundantly above what you can ask or think. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands today. I want you to have faith for your increase. I want you to begin to see your increase. This is the most fruitful, blessed time that you've ever walked in in your life. Because I heard the Spirit of the Lord say that right now in this shaking and this transfer of His wealth from the world into the hands of His people, God is visiting His sons and His daughters. That's you, that's you, that's you. And He's placing on them an anointing for increase today. Come on, say, Lord, I receive it in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Come on, just give God some praise in this house. Say, Lord, more. Say, more, more. I want you to get a vision of your future that is so humongous that it makes where you are right now look so small and so tiny. Lift your hands and say, God, deliver me. Set me free from every limitation, every barrier, every boundary. Help me to be an extravagant lover of You, my heavenly bridegroom. I want a radical visitation from You. I want a one-on-one encounter with Your Holy Spirit. I want to be armed and dangerous for You. I want a fresh baptism of fire. I want a force field of Your glory surrounding me this morning. I want an open heaven over my life. Hallelujah. Thank You, Lord. Father, I pray for every person this morning. I thank You, Lord, that right now, even as they've heard Your Word, I just sense increase. I sense an enlargement. I can hear the stretching out of the 10 pegs. Some of you have been crying out to the Lord for your ministry to be enlarged, to be increased. Some of you pastors watching on the live stream and on television. And I hear the Lord say, son, daughter, I want to do it. But increase has got to happen on the inside of you first. Come on, let Him enlarge you this morning. Let Him enlarge your thinking this morning. I want you to take everything that you know God has said down from your mind, out from the realm of your emotions and say, God, I want revelation this morning. Now lift your hands and say, activate me. Activate me, God. I wanna be able to step into that realm just like that, just like that in Jesus' Name. So Father, would you touch every person right now? I want you to sing with me. Enlarge my territory. Come on, make this your prayer this morning. No limits, no no boundaries, no boundaries. I see increase increase all around around me.
because every head is bowed this morning in this place. Maybe you are here today and you don't have a personal relationship with God. You don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. I feel this morning that there are people watching and people even here today. You know, you've heard the gospel. You've heard the words before. You've registered them in your mind. You've had an emotional response because of the places you've been in your life. But today, this morning, right now, you are getting a revelation on the inside of you of how loved you are by God, of the fact that He has a great purpose and a great plan for your life. Far better than you could ever dream of or imagine or achieve for yourself. That He wants to walk with you and talk with you. That it's not about some rules or religion. It's about a relationship with Jesus. Everything for you can change right now in just this moment. If you want me to pray for you while every head is bowed, slip up that hand right now if you're at right where you are. Come on, put up those hands. I wanna see them. God bless you this morning. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Anybody else this morning? Come on if you, God bless you, sir. If you lifted that hand, I want you to get out of your seat very quickly. Come and stand down here at the front with me. You're about to experience a miracle of salvation this morning. Come quickly. Just come and stand down here with me. God bless you. Come on, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Bless you. God bless you, God bless you. And God bless you. Is there anybody else this morning before we pray? God bless you, sir. Anybody else this morning? Come on, let's celebrate. These lives today are being tried. Bless you guys. Look, there's more coming. That's awesome. These are lives this morning that are being translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of Jesus, God's Son. Hallelujah. So we want to invite you to pray with us if you would. And we're going to pray with you. Would you do that to support them this morning? Say, Father God, thank You that You're a good God that You're a faithful God. Thank You for Your love today. Thank You for loving me. Thank You for dying for me. Thank You for saving me. I stand today and I lift my hands. Just lift your hands. I lift my hands in surrender to You. I give You my life. I give You my past. I give You my present and I give You my future. From today, Jesus, I want to live for You. I want to serve You. Forgive me today. As for my past, wash it in Your blood. Though my sins were as scarlet, today they whiter than snow. Thank You that in this moment, I become Your child. My name is written in heaven. I'm a new creation. I have a new life to live. You are the reason. You are the center of it all. From this moment on, in Jesus' name, Amen. Come on. Bless you guys. We're going to ask that you follow these precious folks. They're going to pray with you, give you a Bible and share communion with you. Come on, let's celebrate this morning. So while you remain standing, we're going to share communion together. If you take the cup this morning, you take the bread. Father, we thank You that on the night in which You were betrayed, you took bread, you gave thanks and broke it. And you said, this is my body broken for you. Eat in remembrance of me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your broken body today. Thank you for the fact that our salvation was bought and purchased at such a great price. 
Thank you today for the fact that you took all of our shame, all of our guilt, every curse that the enemy of our faith had brought into the world, try to put on our lives, all of that, our sin, our shame, the curse, you took in your own body when you hung on that cross. So thank you that today, God, every curse that the enemy has tried to bring against us is reversed in the name of Jesus and made it inactive and ineffective because you are our blessing. You are our Passover lamb. Thank you today, Lord, as we eat of this bread for the full and the free salvation that you have provided for us. Let's eat the bread together. And Lord, we thank You for the cup, precious, life-giving blood that was shed for us. We drink of this cup today, Lord, and we thank You that You haven't just saved us for the moment, but that You will go on through this blood, saving us, keeping us within that beautiful holy covenant with You. We're signed and we're sealed by this blood unto the day of redemption that we, Lord, know today whatever You've started in our lives, regardless of the measures and the levels and the seasons that we go through in our life, because of this blood, because this blood signs and seals every new covenant promise, You will finish the work that You started in us. That because of this blood, everything You are working out for our good and Your glory, because we are covered in Your blood this morning. Thank You, God, for supernatural protection. Fathers, we take this blood. We thank You that You protect us from COVID-19. We will not be irresponsible. We're not suggesting that. But God, we do what we need to do. And we thank You for a supernatural covering of healing. Your Word says that we will walk in health. Your desire for us is to, to walk in health and to know Your healing provision even as our soul prospers. Thank You that health and healing is our bread as Your children today as we drink of this blood. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Let's drink together. Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Jesus. Graves into gardens, let's declare that as we close this morning. Thank You, Jesus. Thank You, Lord. Bless You. Thank You for sharing with us this morning. If you need prayer, come forward. We'd love to pray with you. Otherwise, have a blessed week. Let's declare this morning that He turns every grave into a garden. Amen. Touch the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise, treasures that fade are never enough. You came along, put me back together. Now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, what I do. To show you my weakness, my failures and flaws, Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me faith. Yeah. Cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. And there's not a place Your mercy and grace Won't find me again
Vater. Gute Morgen zu essen. Du gibst Beauty for Ashes. 